All right, guys, welcome back to the next uh, fundamental problem from your Hebler book. Again, there's a 12th edition. Uh, most likely, these will be the same for the 11th or 13th edition. I'm not even sure what edition Hebler's uh, in already, you know, season 17 maybe. So let's uh, go over this example, okay? It's very similar to the last one, except now they throw you a little, um, you know, the the special right triangle okay over here so whenever you see a special right triangle okay so you have your three four five triangle actually let me do that in a different color so let's say you have your force of a hundred here right there's a hundred newtons okay what you want to do is um, split Oh, hold on, let me finish this. Four, three, and five. Okay. So whenever you see this, you should cheer because it makes things a lot easier. All right. Whenever you have this three, four, five triangle, you should know that your x component of the force, okay, will be a ratio of between the sides of this. So the x component here is going to be the adjacent side to this angle. Okay. So it's going to be four or just pick the side that's aligned with the x-axis as well okay parallel to the x-axis so it's going to be four and then over the hypotenuse times a hundred okay this should give you 80 newtons and then the y direction do the same thing so what's the side that's aligned with the y-axis well it's going to be three over the hypotenuse times a hundred now we got 60 Newtons. All right. So now we have those forces broken down here. Let's just put them down on the paper on the on paper. Okay. So we know this is eighty newtons, and then we have the y axis, the y force going down sixty newtons. Okay. So then we're just going to have to take the, they want the moment of the force about 0. 0.0. So a pivot point is O and they want the net force, the net moment being transferred by this force over to O. So it's going to be MO or maybe you're used to doing tau O, but again, you're most likely not since most engineering books have the M, but if you're a physicist, you might see it as tau. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. So 60, right? And then again, I'm going to annoy you with that line of action. The line of action of 60 is just going down like this, do, 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 straight down. And then how, how far do we have to shift it over so this line intersects O? Okay, well, it's going to be 5 meters. Okay, so it's going to be 60 times 5. All right, and then for the x direction, the force on the x direction is going to be 80, and then line of action for this one. How far do we have to shift it down in order to intersect the pivot point? Well, it's going to have to be two meters, so it's going to be 80 times two. And again, just put a pencil down your paper along this direction and just slide, translate it down into so until it intersects point O. Okay. And so let's see what direction is this? Well if I push on this uh, weird wood structure, right? If I push it in this direction, you're gonna want to bend it in this direction, right? You're gonna want to make it rotate clockwise. Right? So we know it's gonna be a negative moment, right? Because we said counterclockwise was positive and then we said clockwise was negative. Right. And now with Y, if I push down on this, again, this thing is going to want to bend in this direction, so it wants to rotate clockwise again, so that's negative as well. Adding these two together, we get minus 300, minus 160. All right, this equals minus 460 newton meters. Okay. Or you can 
give it to your professor like this. 460 Newton meter. This is a Newton meter. Like that. Okay. That way you have your magnitude and your direction. Here you have your direction and magnitude. All right, same thing. All right, guys. I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, maybe just even understanding the you know the special right triangles. Okay. Take use those to your advantage. Don't calculate you know what's tan, you know opposite over adjacent or cosine whatever. Don't do that. Just what side's parallel to the x? Four. So the x component is going to be four fifths. What side is parallel to the y-axis? Oh, in this case, it's 3. So then 3 fifths times 100. Okay? That's simple. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Hope to see you guys on my next videos. Later.